Hi everybody, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com. Today I have what I'm calling an IKEA hack for you. You know, the bookcases that are usually in the back of my videos. I've had to rearrange the studio a bit here because our eldest two are coming home from college this week and we are short one bedroom. So I'm getting creative here and I'm gonna share part of my studio space with my son, but I'd like to divide the room. So we move the bookcases and then I wanted to give him a little storage space. So I'm gonna share half of the bookcase cubbies with him. And this was my solution. Here was this um, fabric panel, which I attached with fabric tacks. And those will go right in this Ikea furniture with a little hammer. And then I made it so that he can store his goodies on this side and I won't have to see them. And likewise, he won't have to see my goodies. And then on the other side, there's a pretty backdrop for that. And what I think you can do with these is if you wanted, you could size this larger and create a panel like that would be a really fun window or doorway cover and you would just install your tacks intermittently there and then you could roll this up and attach them at the various points. Wouldn't that be a cute little valance? I only have one hand so I can't show you how that would look but you could even go like this. And there you go, like a little half balance in a child's room. That's cute. So I made all different colors because I love the color. And you could make them reversible. It's fun. So let's get to it and I'll show you what you need for this project. All right, you're going to need two 14 inch squares and four pieces of three inch cuts of elastic, very fine. I believe this is one eighth of an inch elastic. Just make a little loop with your elastic and position that up in each corner. And I, I don't even think it's worth it to try and use pins. I'm just gonna go straight to the machine and attach this elastic in each corner. I'm just going forward and reverse with a couple stitches there to secure that. And I'm going to do that for all four corners. And for this, you'll want like the tiniest stitch length. That first um, one that I stitched on the machine was set to a long stitch length. So I'm going to go back over it again. much better. That'll be nice and secure. the elastic to all four corners. And 
you're going to take the other panel and position that right on top, pretty sides facing. And if you want, you can put a couple of pins in there just to keep it from shifting. You're going to leave a three inch opening at the top in which to flip this around. So reinforce with the back stitch on either side, but otherwise you're just going to go all the way around. And this is using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to reverse. And then pick up the foot and jump approximately 3 inches. Reverse stitch. Pivot with the needle down. Just trim the little thread there so it doesn't pull. And then we're going to flip it right side out. And I'm going to head over to the iron and press it flat. You want to poke out those corners so that you can see your elastic. Make sure they're secure. It's not too late. If you need to go back in and reinforce, you can. So just give it a little tug. And then when I'm at the iron, I'll press it nice and flat and then I'm going to fold this little opening in. Now I do not want to stitch all the way around this because I don't want to see that stitching because I really want these to kind of give the appearance of like cubbies that I slipped in there and I feel like if I stitch around it then it's going to look more like a panel. So I'm going to use my lifetime supply of Stitch Witch, I think they call this. It's, it's, fabric glue but it's um, designed for hemming so I'm just going to break off a couple pieces of that and when I'm at the iron I'm going to stuff that in there and just glue that seam down so I'll be right back all right and I have my cute little panel ready to go and the, I put the glue in there and that seam is closed up nice and tight I got little tabbies on each end. Then I'm going to install these little um, furniture tacks, I think they're called. I have a pack here. Oh, they're called decorative nails. And they're by Dritz. And they say that they're 0.4375 inch decorative nails. So with these, you can't really, there's no room to hold this like you would a regular nail because like it can't get any grip. So when you go to wherever your wood or your bookcase that you're going to install this, put it between your fingers like that and find a little narrow part. And then you'll be able to get just a little, make a little contact. It's hard to do 
do this backwards. And you can start hammering that. And then once you get a little grip in there, then you can give it one or two good whacks. Now I left it probably at least a quarter of an inch out from the bookcase. I didn't hammer it all the way in so that elastic could loop on and off of there. So I hope you found this project to be useful. I know it certainly is a simple concept, but when you think about all of the unsightly things and clutter you could cover up, like I love that. Think about cupboards and bathrooms and things like that. Um, doorways, like I said, you could make an adorable little valance by just folding that in half and hanging that up on like two nails if you didn't want to use the tacks. So I will be back next week with another surprise sewing projects. All of our projects selfishly are geared towards items which I need or um, purposes that I need to fulfill. Hence the name Wee Bit Selfish Sewing Circle or not name but tagline. So thanks again guys. Have a great week.